this morning, as we get ready to look into the word of the Lord, we've been in a series, Joseph series, and I hope you have enjoyed it. As you know, Janet kicked it off and laid a foundation and, and talked about Joseph and uh, his life and, and him being a little bit of a snitch and, and uh, causing a little bit of riffle there through his family. And then uh, Pastor Algier came and spoke so eloquently on the famine and that God was in the middle of the famine and that whatever you're going through, that God is able to sustain you. What a wonderful word. And, and uh, I'm so thankful again for our staff who are able to, to stand up here and to deliver the word of the Lord. So today we're going to look at the fourth part of this series. And it's just simply this, what I want to speak on this morning. But God meant it for good. But God meant it for good. I know that some of you are going through some of the toughest times of your life. But listen, I want to remind you that everything that we go through, somehow God, we come out stronger and God comes out looking a whole lot better. Amen. So we're going to look at that this morning. I want to just give you a little bit of rundown on Joseph, maybe for those of you who have missed out uh, on parts of this series, and you can go back and watch it online as well. But uh, this morning, if our media team, if you would just throw up the lineage uh, of uh, Joseph for me here, I just wanted you to see the background. You know, in Sunday school, we used to sing the song, Father Abraham had many sons. Oh, y'all done off key. I done got you. <laughs> But anyway, you remember that, that, that little uh, song that we used to sing? Well, he had many sons. Yes, he did. And Isaac was one of them. And then there's, uh, uh, out of Isaac came Jacob and Esau. And out of Jacob came Joseph, the story that we are discussing. And I said, these 11 other dudes. Well, you know, those 11 other dudes are important as well, as you're going to see in the story here, that God always has a plan. And I want to tell everyone, every one of you are leaving a legacy as well. Some of you had a praying grandmother, great-grandmother, great-grandfather. And I, there is no doubt in my mind that you are here today because of the prayers that have gone before you. There was someone praying for you. Maybe it was a cousin, an uncle, or, or the church praying for you. Well, I want to remind you that God made a promise to Abraham. And when God made that covenant promise to Abraham, it was for the, the people of the earth as well, that they too would be blessed through this man. I'm telling you today, you are blessed through this man. The promises that were given, the covenant promises that were given to Abraham have come and blessed our lives today. And hopefully you will see that uh, portrayed uh, in the sermon this morning. So this morning, God, we just open up our hearts and our minds again to the word of God. Holy Spirit, just overshadow every heart, every mind. We receive the word with gladness today. Lord, speak to every heart. And I pray, Lord, that the enemy would not be able to come in and steal the word from us. But, Lord, help us to hear the word and obey it in Christ's name. Amen. So as we look at this story this morning that God meant it for good, God gave Joseph dreams. These dreams, they made his brothers mad. And they devised a plan to kill him. But there was one of these 11 other dudes that I talked about up there. His name is Judah. And Judah convinced his other brothers that they wanted to sell Joseph to some traveling merchants who were on their way to Egypt. So they did. They sold him. And once they were in Egypt, uh, he was offered up on an auction block as a slave. And there was a man in, by divine providence in the crowd that day. And this man's name was Potiphar. And uh, Potiphar purchased Joseph that day to work and manage his household. It would be 22 years, think of this now, 
before Joseph would ever see his brothers again. And we're going to see how God is at work even restoring relationships that have been severed and broken. What these brothers did, they soaked his coat, this wonderful coat that his father had made for him. And maybe again in Sunday school you heard about Joseph's coat of many colors. Well, they soaked it in animal blood and they Take it to Joseph's father, Jacob. And when Jacob sees the coat, he surmises that wild animals now have destroyed his son, Joseph. He mourns over him. As you know, this is one of his favorite sons. He had favorites. And we're not going to talk about favorites today, are we? Y'all just think y'all the favorite, right? So... These brothers think that they are destroying the dreams of this dreamer, Joseph, their brother. But what they don't realize is they are actually helping fulfill the dreams that God gave to Joseph. They cannot kill the dream, nor can they kill the dreamer. What I want to tell somebody here, you've gone through a lot of hard bumps in life. And you've gone through some difficult places. But I want to remind you, those hard times cannot kill the dream within you unless you let it. And they cannot kill you. They will make you stronger. They can't kill the dream, nor can they kill the dreamer. God does this so often in Scripture. God takes the very sins of our enemies and makes them the means of their salvation. Where they see how God truly works. They have no clue that they are just instruments in the hands of God. So Joseph is sold to Potiphar. Potiphar is commander of the guard in Pharaoh's court. He too is being used by God. So Joseph doesn't have a clue as to what is going on around him. He knows that his brothers, they have sold him into slavery. He's in a foreign country now. And he now belongs to Potiphar. He knows that he is now a slave. The one thing that Joseph has going for him, he has a heart for God. Can I tell somebody this morning, whatever's going on in your life, all the hard times you're going through, there's one thing you need is a heart for God keep loving God through it all amen Amen. but what is uh, this excellent trait that he has where did it come from I believe it all started with his great grandfather Abraham and his grandfather Isaac along with his brothers they have been handed down a godly heritage by their father Jacob But just because your father loves God does not necessarily mean your children and your grandchildren are going to automatically fall in love with God. There's got to be some training along the way. Amen. There's got to be some teaching along the way. So Joseph, what he does, he clings to God. His brothers, not so much at the time. But you will see eventually how God gets their attention and they too will bow and serve the Lord. So they're, they're all in the plan of God, even in their evil plotting and in their lying and in their deception, God is at work. He is fulfilling his plan. And what everyone here needs to understand, you may have plans of your own. You may have many plans for your life, but the Bible lets us know it is God who causes those plans to succeed. We must give God the credit. Amen. Amen. So let me stop and, and say right here, I don't advocate sin and I don't advocate walking away from God. But even when, when your children may walk away, even you may walk away from God, God lets us know once that seed is planted in them, they may get old and they're going to realize, hey, I'm going to turn back to God. They're going to realize they cannot make it without him. And, and we've got to trust that the word of God is stronger Amen. Then our culture, then what's going on in this world to pull them back to God. God has a way of taking 
the evil plans and the intent of man and working it into his purpose and plans and working it out for our good. So when you look at Joseph, a godly son, a, a son who has a good heart, and so he wants to please God, and the Bible lets us know that the hand of the Lord was upon him and that the Lord blesses him and makes promises to his great grandfather now I want you to look at this with me this morning it's in Genesis chapter 12 it's verses 1 through 3 and it reads like this now the Lord said to Abram go from your country and your kindred and from your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation notice what the Lord says I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all families, somebody say, that's me. All families of the earth shall be blessed. See, there is a promise given here. God had a plan. He's going to build a nation of people that he wants them to be his people. He wants them to serve him. And he's going to use the descendants of Abraham. He will use Jacob and his 12 sons to build a nation for God. What am I saying this morning? I want you to see how intentional God is and that God always has a plan. So God gives Joseph dreams, and in these dreams, God is preparing Joseph, and not only Joseph, his brothers for what is to come, but they don't understand what God is doing. Now listen, I don't know, there may be some dreamers in here where God gives dreams to you and you may not understand those dreams right now do you realize it took 22 years for Joseph to understand what God was doing and some of y'all want to know right now what God's doing in your life tell your neighbor say neighbor wake up it may take a little time right but you just hold on to that. God has a plan here, and God is building a nation. God is giving him these dreams, and God is preparing Joseph. God is preparing his brothers. And even though Joseph suffers and Joseph did not understand why he was going through what he was going through, through God was working in it all see God was sustaining him in the pit God was sustaining him in the pain come on you may go through it but God's going to sustain you through it amen he's going to keep you he's going to hold you so when you are suffering I remind you, don't count God out as you are looking at this story. You may not understand why, but you don't have to understand why. Just know this, that it's the hand of the Lord upon your life that is keeping you. Amen? God will take your suffering and he will use it to bring about his perfect plan and purposes for your life. I'm sure Joseph was wondering, you know, why me? But even in his emotional state and of suffering, not understanding why his brothers hated him so, Joseph served faithfully in Potiphar's house. Instead of grumbling, you will not hear him grumbling nor complaining about his plight in life and complaining against against God or complaining against his family the Bible says he served faithfully and Joseph decided that in his heart I'm going to serve God and I'm going to work for Potiphar without complaining look at your neighbor say hello neighbor no complaining right as a result everything having to do with Potiphar's household was under the watchful eye and care of Joseph in his discretion. And in faithful service to his master and to God, Joseph runs from adultery and fornication, but it cost him. Miss Potiphar lies. She comes in walking like an Egyptian, trying to tempt this man, trying to get him to bow down to her and to serve her needs, but... Joseph, the Bible says, he runs from her. And because he runs from her, the Bible says she lies on him, plots against him, and he goes to jail for it. Notice this. 
for his righteousness, he goes to jail. Didn't right, is it? But how many know this? When you read the story, God is at work. Aren't you glad we get the, the whole story here? We get to see what's going to happen. But you know what? Joseph at the time doesn't see that. He doesn't feel that. He doesn't know what's transpiring here. All he knows is, I've been doing good. I'm doing the right thing, and I'm suffering for it. How many of you ever felt like that? You know, I told the truth, but I'm suffering for it. You told the truth, but you get laid off your job. This happens. Even in jail, he has no clue that God is at work on his behalf. But he has favor with the jailer and is given special privileges. Can you see this? God made even prison a place of favor for him. The hand of God was upon him. Joseph looks at his life and it makes absolutely no sense at all. And even though he is suffering, Joseph still says, Okay, God, I'm going to trust you with my life. Joseph interprets a couple of dreams. In, in prison and they come true. The butler is placed back in his position and Joseph asked the butler, he said, hey, when you leave here, you know, make sure that Pharaoh knows about me. He gets out of there, he forgets him. Has nothing, doesn't even uh, remember him while he's there in prison. The Bible says he serves two more years in prison. Notice, for his righteousness, he serves two more years in prison. Come on, sometimes that makes what we're going through look pretty good, doesn't it? He was called up by Pharaoh to interpret a dream. And he nailed it with God's help. Now, Joseph interprets the dream. He said, look, there's going to be seven lean years and there's going to be seven plentiful years. And Joseph tells him what must be done to survive these lean years. Pharaoh is so impressed with his interpretation of the dream and the strategy that he is giving him to cope with these lean years that he promotes Joseph to second in command in all of Egypt. He goes from the jail to second in command. Who but God can do something like that? Seven years of plenty came and Joseph wisely stored up the grain as, uh, as he shared with uh, Pharaoh. Then the seven years of famine came and his brothers got hungry, right? And they hear there is food in Egypt. So what do they do? They go down to Egypt. After 22 years has elapsed, they don't even recognize Joseph. He recognizes them though and he eventually tells them who he is. They were stunned to realize that that man they throwed in the pit, that man they sold into slavery is now second in command and they are shaken in their boots. If God be for me, who can? Yes, God knows how to bless you even in suffering. They tried to get rid of the dreamer and in getting and tried to get rid of the dreams that this young man was having. They tried to get rid of the dreamer and in getting rid of the dreamer, the dreams are fulfilled. God brings them about. Their plot fell into the hands of God. No one can resist God's ultimate purpose. I don't care how evil they are. I don't care how they're plotting and what they're doing. There are men in this world today who are plotting evil against this nation. They're plotting evil in the world. But can I tell you, even in their evil plotting, even in the Antichrist, his evil plotting, it's all going to work into the hands of Almighty God. Everything that is being done, God is up there seeing it all. And it's all working into his purpose and plan. The prophecy that God gave Abraham, that his descendants, he said they're going to spend 400 years in Egypt. Think about this. You remember great-grandpa Abraham? God gave that man a promise. 400 years, your descendants are going to be in Egypt. Guess what? That prophecy is now coming to pass how did God's people 
here end up in Egypt to fulfill God's plan. I want you to, nobody can make this kind of stuff up, right? You think your family's crazy. Think about this. Through attempted murder, through greed slave dealing, through heartless deceit of a broken father who was fed a bunch of lies, God turned their wickedness for his good and he's going to use it to bring his people together in Egypt and his plan is going to come to pass and it's starting now. What is God teaching us about his ways and his purpose and his plans? You think you here for you. You think you're here just to fulfill your dream. Oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. I want to be that. You are here to fulfill God's ultimate purpose and plan. And if it's to be a doctor, you'll be a doctor. If it's to be a pastor, be a pastor. Whatever God's purpose and plan is, what you need to say is, okay, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Your purpose and your plans are the, are the ones that last. So there are two verses that interpret this whole story. These two verses are two of the most important scriptures in the story of Joseph and God's plan that we see here. Joseph has told his brothers who he is. They have not seen him in 22 years and they are completely terrified of him because they know what they did to him. And they're thinking in his mind, okay, he's going to destroy every last one of us. That's what he's going to do. But notice Genesis 45 and 5. There's a, this is an, a verse of scripture here that is key to everything that's taken place. Verse 5, but now... Do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. There's another revelation that Joseph is getting here. Joseph is saying here, my suffering was the way God chose to send me into my destiny. Through attempted murder, through greed, slave dealing, through heartless, deceitful lies that broke the heart of my father, God used it all to send a savior, someone before you to preserve life. God did that for me. So don't be mad. What a foreshadowing of Jesus. Isn't that just what Jesus did? To prepare a way for all who have sinned against him to give us hope and a future. The psalmist said in Psalms 105, 16 and 17, Moreover, he, God, called for a famine in the land. Even even the psalmist here is recognizing what God did. He destroyed all the provisions of bread. He, God, sent a man before them. Who was this man? This man's name was Joseph who was sold as a slave in and through all wickedness. God was at work. God is all-knowing. God is omniscient. God used the evil devices of man and the plans of man. And God caused a famine to wipe out bread. And all the time, God was preparing and developing Joseph to preserve the seed of Abraham. He was preparing Joseph. I gave Father Abraham a promise and Joseph you're going to be part of that to help preserve life. How powerful God is. Are you following me this morning? What is happening in Genesis 15 and 13 is coming to pass. Notice this verse. God said to Abram, know for sure that your descendants will be strangers living temporarily in a land, Egypt. That is not theirs. Why? Because God eventually was going to deliver them and take them to the promised land, Canaan. Right? He was going to raise up who? The deliverer, Moses. He's going to raise up another man. 
and then God was, God was going to raise up uh, Joshua. And, and God's still raising up people. Even our generation, God is raising up people to fulfill his purpose and his plan. You may not understand altogether what God is doing, and you don't have to. Isn't it amazing? Do I got anybody here that you like to know the plan? I dare say that's about everybody in the building and everybody watching. I like to know what I'm getting myself into. I've made that statement before. How about you? <laughs> before I sign that document, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to read every page of it. I want to know what I'm getting myself into. He says, where well, they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. Did that come to pass? Exactly. It all came to pass. What this should say to all of us, again, is the plans and the word of the Lord stands forever. The Bible lets us know not one word of the Lord will ever fail. Abraham is not alive at this time, but the promise is... And the promise is still alive today. Abraham's, uh, if, he is, if he's alive, you know where he's at, right? He's in heaven. But he is not in the, on the earth. God kept his promise from generation to generation. The famine was not an accident. And I just want to say right here, the pandemic we have been in for two years has not been an accident. God's hand was on it all, in it all. He will use the evil done to my family and your family for his good. And that was done against his church. And his people. Let me tell you, in it all, God is at work. Amen. I don't understand it. You don't either. But I don't have to understand it. I just trust that God's working. How about you? Hard times and suffering wasn't an accident. In it all, God is going to bring about the blessings of his provision. God is going to fulfill his promises. Satan wasn't the cause of the famine. We blame a lot on the devil, don't we? The devil made me do it. <laughs> no, you probably wanted to. God did not look down through time and say, oh, I see that Satan is going to bring a famine on the land and try to kill my people. I got to devise a plan somehow to preserve them and save them. No, that wasn't it. God saw it all before the foundations of the world were formed. God sent Joseph to preserve life. This is going to be a key factor with God sustaining life. The second verse that is vital to the story is found in Genesis 50 and 20 his brothers are thinking that Joseph after all they have put him through is going to take revenge out on them notice what Joseph says in Genesis 50 and 20 but as for you you meant evil against me he recognized what was in them <laughs> but God <laughs> some of y'all been going through some stuff but God, but God's on your side. Don't you let the devil think that he's getting away with anything in your life. But God is at work. What did he say? But God meant everything you did for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. In order to bring it about what is it about the prophecy that 400 years would be spent in Egypt and through the sin get this and the deceit of these 11 he's saying you meant it for evil but God is going to take what was meant for evil and use it for our good, God used your plots, God used your hate, God used your schemes, God used your lies to bless me and to get me to where I am today. And that was to fulfill the purpose and the plans, not only for his life, but for the life of his brothers, because God is keeping a promise. Can I tell y'all, God keeps his promises? God, one thing he cannot do, God cannot lie. 
He's keeping his promise. What, what is he keeping his promise? He's keeping his promise to Abraham, Joseph's great-grandfather. Your evil plan, he's saying, he's reckon, it tried to destroy me, but God's good plan kept me alive. Anybody feel like that? Listen to me. Evil has tried to destroy you, but God's good plan has preserved your life. Evil has tried to stop you, but it was God's good plan that kept you up and picked you up and kept you going. Evil tried to kill your dreams, but God's good plan has kept your dreams alive. Evil tried to tempt you, but it was God's good plan that looked at you and said, Run! Run as fast as you can from this. That's God. If you ever hear God say run, do the best you can. I don't care if you got high heels on. <laughs> run. Evil tried to discourage you, but it was God's good intentions, God's good plan that encouraged you and helped you and strengthened you. You meant this for evil against me, but God. God meant it for my good. In other words, your evil fulfilled a purpose. It was used for my good. Who but God, somebody tell me, who but God can take the evil intent of a heart and allow it to bless me? Powerful stuff. Joseph said, that is what God did for me. All of it was used... For God's glory and God's purposes. Joseph was saying, your plan was to kill me. Get this. Your plan was to kill me, but God's plan was to save you. <laughs> That's incredible. All this time you think it's about you and your feelings. You think it's about them hurting you and doing you wrong and betraying you? No, it's all about them seeing God in you, seeing Jesus in you, his hand on you, God promoting you and God blessing you and God keeping you and you're not taking revenge. They see so much God in you that they can't help but recognize themselves. But God, yeah, we meant it for evil. Joseph was saying, your plan to kill, was to kill me, but God's plan was to save you. Can you see the love of God in this story? Can you see Jesus in this story? You remember it, right? You Sadducees and you Pharisees, you planned to kill Jesus, but God's plan was to save you. Joseph is the epitome of Romans 12 and 21. Let's read it together. Got it on do not be overcome by evil. Some of y'all are letting the evil mess y'all all up. All you Democrats out there, all you Republicans out there, all you who hate both parties out there. Come on, somebody. I know where you at. <laughs> I've read your Facebook posts, some of them. Y'all think it's going to be a donkey. <laughs> Amen. We all think it's going to be an elephant. It's going to be a lamb. God's working it all for his good. My advice to you is this. When it comes to politics, love the donkey and love the elephant. Love the devil out of both of them because they got evil in both of them. You know what I'm saying? Let them see Jesus in you. Because you know that God made a promise to Father Abraham and it's going to come to pass. We all know that it ain't going to be a Democrat in heaven or a Republican in heaven. It's going to be the Christians in heaven, right? Now, some of y'all probably take me wrong there. There's going to be some Democrats there. There's going to be some Republicans there, but they ain't all going. Unless you... Except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. I think everybody's about sick of politics. But let me tell you, there's evil in the world and there's evil intent in the world. And you know what? They play in all of us. I said they're playing all of us. 
It's almost like we're puppets on a string to them, pulling our emotions and getting me to hate you and you hate me and all this kinds of stuff. When the Lord says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Do good to your Democrat. Do good to your Republican. Oh, I know this ain't a political sermon either. And I don't do politics. You all know that. But I am saying this, there's a God at work in both parties. <laughs> and his plan is going to come to pass because there's going to, Antichrist going to rise on this world. So God knows who to put in the White House to get his plan done. <laughs> I know you want things different. But let me tell you, you're going to have to trust God's plan. Joseph wanted God to do it differently. He didn't understand what God was up to. But if you would open your Bible and begin to read and see what God is up to, you're going to have a whole lot more peace when laws are passed in the land that you don't like. But God meant it for good because he's bringing about his plan. Somebody ought to be a lot happier today that I helped you out with all that. <laughs> all right. Don't be overcome by the evil that's going on in the world. But you overcome evil by what? By doing evil? No. By doing good. What we see in the life of Joseph is a glimpse of Jesus. And, and three little things I'm going to bring out right here. What you see is a pattern. We see God's grace in the life of Joseph. Even though great sin was committed against Joseph, grace was extended. Sin was committed against God and God sent Jesus and extended grace to all who have sinned against him. Joseph was betrayed and sold. Jesus was betrayed and sold. They lied on Joseph. They lied on Jesus. They, Joseph suffered. Jesus suffered. Joseph forgave them and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Joseph was sent to preserve life. Jesus was sent so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. We see a pattern here. We see the foreshadowing of Jesus in the story of Joseph. And not only do we see, see a pattern, we see righteousness. Joseph was a righteous man. He did the right thing. I hope when I die that people will say of me, he did the right thing. He tried to always do the right thing. Amen? He was extraordinarily steadfast, Joseph was. He was covenant keeping. He was not a murmurer or a complainer about his sufferings. He trusted God continually despite his circumstances. He served others. I want to say that again. He served others. He served others. If you want to feel better about yourself, serve somebody else besides yourself. Give. Give us your time to someone else that may need that. Serve others. He wasn't prideful. He wasn't arrogant. He was obedient to those who were over him and he served them well. He was a man of honor. He was a man of integrity and he walked in wisdom. We see the righteousness of Jesus displayed. Jesus was perfectly righteous. He was obedient to his father. The Bible says even unto death. He did not murmur. He did not complain. But the Bible says willingly laid down his life to serve others. The son of man was walked in wisdom he walked with integrity he fulfilled the covenant plan of God he was righteous thirdly we see this we see prophecy fulfilled as we get ready to close this morning Jacob now this is remember this is Joseph's father he's about to die 
And what he does, he begins to prophesy over his children. And he pulls one son. Now, I want you to remember what Joseph said in the back of your mind. You meant it for evil, but God sent me to preserve life. Okay? Jacob is dying. He begins to prophesy over his children, and he calls Judah out. He lays his dying hand upon him and prophesies. Genesis 49, 8 through 10. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons, listen, shall bow down before you. Do you remember Joseph's dreams? All his brothers bowing down before him. The dreams and plans of God wasn't all about Joseph. It was also about his brothers. And particularly his brother Judah. And again, all brothers, he's saying, they will bow down. They understand here, God somehow is at work in all of this. Judah, if you remember, he was the one who spotted the caravan that was coming by when Joseph was in the pit, waving them down. Hey, we decided not to, to kill him. They sold him to the caravan. It was Judah out of all the sons of Jacob that was to rule over the tribes of Israel. Because of prophecy, the story of Joseph points now to Judah. So Jacob prophesies and says, Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness who dares rouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Now let me just explain that just a little bit right here. This is a prophecy of the final coming of the king of Israel, the lion of Judah. The scepter and the ruler's staff is a sign to Judah. There is coming a king out of this lineage. Out of you, Judah. Yes, Joseph, you came and you preserved life and you managed everything. And God's going to establish a nation out of all 12 of you. Whew. Even their evil intent and all of their planning. God is saying, Judah, as I lay my hands on you, I feel something going to come out of you. Out of you is going to come the lion of Judah. Who's he talking about? A scepter? A ruler's staff? What is he talking about? He is saying out of you, there's going to come King David. Know the lineage. you got to go back and read the lineage. Out of Judah, which means praise, by the way, as evangelist Felicia taught us on Wednesday night. But out of you is going to come King David. There's going to come Solomon, who's going to reign over Israel. But also, you got to keep going. Out of that lineage is going to come the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is going to come through you, Judah. And see, some of us think it's just about us and my generation. It's about the generation that's after you, the generation that's coming. You need to stay with God, trust God, look to God. It isn't just about you, but it's for you. Amen. Stand with me as I get ready to close. It says, the scepter and the ruler's staff is a sign of a king. And it's going to be in the lineage of Judah until someone comes. And that someone we know is Jesus. And what will mark this person? 
The Bible says that the people will obey. This isn't talking about just the king of Israel, Jesus. Jacob is prophesying one day. He is seeing down through the eons of time, even beyond us, that one day Jesus will descend and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess before him. Notice the book of Revelation. Let's read it as we get ready to go. Revelation 5. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, notice what he says, the lion of the tribe of who? Judah. Hallelujah. The root of David. He said he's come down through that lineage. Yes, Jesus. Has conquered so that he can open the scroll and it's seven seals. We know this is referring to the end times. Jesus. And the Bible says in verse 9, and they sang a new song. For y'all who got to have an old one, they sang a new one. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain by your blood and you ransomed people for God. Notice this. From the Swanson tribe, from the Algier tribe, From the Rambo tribe, from the Lawrence tribe, what tribe are you a part of? The Bible says from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. The lion of the tribe of Judah will one day have the obedience of all people. That is what Jacob was seeing here and it all points then, it all points here to Judah and we've read that story many times and we thought it's all about Joseph come on, it was about God preserving Judah so that this lineage will be preserved that nothing could kill Tell me God don't have a plan. Tell me God don't have a purpose in everything. Now I want you to look at your life this morning and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. What are you trying to tell me today? What are you wanting to show me today about my life and the legacy that I am living so that my children and my grandchildren and everybody after me can know they don't have to guess that I'm a Christian. They don't have to guess whom I put my faith and my trust in. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. You need to leave something for them to follow besides money. Hello, somebody. Because they're going to need it. Heavenly Father, our hearts are open. Speak, Lord. To every heart realizing you got a plan you have a purpose for everything that you do we can always see Lord exactly what you're doing and suffering seems to dim everything the trials seem to dim everything and even our faith and our trust but God can we all say this morning Lord I trust you Lord I trust you with my life and some of you need to trust God with your children and your grandchildren and your crazy cousins. You say, God, I trust you with my family. I don't understand what you're doing, but I know you are working it all for your good. And it is according to your purpose. It's according to your plan. I don't understand you, God, but I trust you. God meant it for good Joseph left us that word so father we declare you meant it for our good and somehow you will get the glory and the honor for it all in Jesus name